going on, y'all? It's your boy, J.H. Givens here. And we'll see. And welcome to yet another episode of the Acromas Podcast, episode 91. We are nine episodes away from 100, a whole century mark with the Acromas Podcast. What an accomplishment. And we want to thank you for you guys for joining us, for supporting us, to allowing us to build with you. You're, we're entering in your homes, in your cars, or wherever you may be listening to this podcast. And I'm assuming if you are listening that it is either on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you can hear a podcast. But if you're watching us and you're seeing our beautiful smiling faces this afternoon, it's a beautiful Sunday, I want you to do three things for me. I need you to hit that like button. I need you to hit that subscribe button. I need you to hit that notification bell on YouTube. Here's what that will do. It will not only help the channel grow, but it'll help you grow. And I'll tell you why. The next time that you hop on YouTube and you're scrolling down your feed and you're looking for an inspirational, motivational podcast that'll allow you to build sustainable goals and achieve them, which is the most important part of goal setting, you will be the very first to see episode 91 of the Acromas podcast. And most of all, we'll see. Hey, I'm going to drop another F for you. It's free to do so. Damn. Right. I mean, how many things can we say that about at this point in time? It's a lot that's happening. There's a lot of another, there's another, there's a lot of frustration amongst the world. Uh, but this is one way to read uh, this yourself, uh, give yourself some time, allow yourself to build into where you want to go, what you're trying to do, what you want to accomplish. Hit that reboot button. Um, this is one way to do it. This is the place to go. This is what we're about. Uh, so as Jay mentioned, he wants you to what? Like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell. And I'm going to ask one more for you to do. Uh, share the content, each one, teach one. That's what we're all about here because we believe each and each and every single one of our viewers matter. So this is why we do this. And we, we want to make sure that we are able to give this back and really grow with one another. And this is how we can contribute. So make sure to do these things, guys, because it's free to get this content. You're not going to find it like, like, like this. There's not too many places out there where you get these sort of gems. Not at all. And I, I got to say, man, it is unbelievable that we are uh, giving this out at no charge because some of these gems that we are giving to you guys, man, I just don't, I don't know if you understand the gravity of what we're putting into this. Not, not what, not what us two are doing specifically, but what's being said. I mean, you go through now 91 different episodes of gems, actionable items that you can put inside of your life. And here's the thing, right? We, we always say this each and every week without action. These are just words going in your ear and one out the other. Once you play and you stop this video if it does nothing to you, just take notes for those gems that you hear. Plan an action plan. Just write it down. Write that. Look, Tuesday, I'm going to do X. Wednesday, I'm going to do Y. Thursday, I'm going to do Z. That's it. And what you do is you make it sustainable so that at some point it becomes automatic. You don't even have to think about doing it. That is the beauty of goal setting. That is the beauty of habit building. And that is the beauty of tuning in each and every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. on the Acromas podcast. We'll see what a week it has been, man. I look, We say that every week, right? But God, it has been a week. And I'm sure many people who are going through this week, uh, regardless where you are, regardless what you're doing, I'm sure it's been tough for you too. The holidays are around the corner. So I know you guys are pocket watching. I know you're, I know you're watching your spending. I'm trying to myself. I'm failing. <laughs> but I would say this, listening to last week's episode and, and really taking action on, on really putting myself first and understanding what that looks like, I've been able to take a little bit of a step back and, and really listen to my body, really focus in on understanding myself a little bit more and, and taking my foot off the gas a little bit. And I would say that at first I was a little intimidated because, you know, I'm, I'm always a guy that's going 100 miles an hour. So be able to pump the brakes a little bit, go the speed limit for a little while. Uh, it, it, it has really been beneficial to my health. Um, it's been beneficial to my sleep this week. I've gotten some really great sleep. Typically, I am a horrendous sleeper. I wake up at all hours of the night and I can't go back. But um, mm -hmm. I've been able to put myself at ease. I've been starting to implement my 
I've been, I've been able to do a lot more meditation um, now than I was before, especially because I'm starting to wake up a little bit early. I'm, I'm a little bit more refreshed than I used to be. Um, and I'm able to invest time in myself. And that is so vital. It is so important, especially in today's day and age. But all the social media drama that's out there and drama off of social media, it's I think we just got to take a step back, really smell the roses, take in some of the nature that's around us and understand that though life is temporary, make sure that you live every single day to the fullest. And I don't mean to be cliche when I say that. I, I truly mean live your personal life as mm -hmm. much as you can in the 24 hour span that you have because you'll never have another day like yesterday, we'll see. Uh, couldn't agree with you more. Uh, <clears throat> my takeaways, and just uh, what I've decided to dedicate to myself was to just re realign my mantra, uh, you know, really focus in on those affirmations and, and if it applies in this season of my life and, and understanding how can I better utilize it uh, as we were referring to as well with time management and uh, you know a lot for some reason a lot of the times this this time of the year is a bit more hectic a bit more stressful for a lot of people and I find myself to be no different I've uh, been under the gun uh, you know in my regular day-to-day -day life uh, and I just had to really kind of regroup and, and take in those gems that, that to reflect on and just understand that uh, you know you can only do but so much, but how you approach things and, uh, you know, be very methodical, plan out can make a huge difference. Like listen to what you said about meditating, uh, something, you know, we love to do here uh, and just dedicating that time uh, for you to just kind of reflect, breathe a little bit and just kind of allow yourself to take it all in, right? Because a lot of the times we, we kind of reflect on things that are, may come across as stressful, right? Uh, but a lot of the cases, we're better for what we've encountered. We're, we're better, we're stronger. Um, and if we focus on it and look at it in that way, you get much more accomplished as well. So for me, it was an opportunity for me to uh, have a hard reflection about areas I needed to tighten up. And I've been doing it. I've been, I've been, I've been a bit more serious about my approach, but I've been having a bit of joy with the process too because it lets me know that I am alive, I'm thriving and you know, I'm killing what I'm great at. And I'm just working on the areas that I can do better in. So uh, that was my takeaways. Um, I'm sure we had a lot of uh, our, our listeners and uh, you know, folks reflect on those things, you know, share their gems with us and just you know, being accountable uh, in, in times of duress, just being accountable mm -hmm. and being uh, very intentional about it uh, and self-aware can make a huge difference in, how your week may shake up. So hmm. that's what I'll leave it at. That's huge, we'll see. I, and I think, you know, one thing I could take away from this past week has just been learning, right? Learning a lot more about ourselves, uh, learning about what we do, how we can improve as people um, and improve the, you know, the podcast that we're running, the business that we're running um, in order to be able to add more value to people's lives. I think, Bottom line, that's the most important thing, right? People, people may not know what we are, who we are, or what we do exactly, but um, if we are able to touch the lives of those out there who are listening to this podcast or who are investing in the fitness brand, I think we are we are making a difference in the world, and I, I'd like to think that myself as well. And um, I mean, speaking of learning and 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 being someone who is able to take all this in, um, I think it's important that in life, we have someone who we look to as a mentor or even a teacher. Um, so I think with episode 91, it is important that we brought someone who has taught hundreds, if not thousands of different people during his life. He is a veteran educator, a former teacher of the year, a doctoral candidate, a historian, a world traveler, and a lover of family and friends. On episode 91, we are proud to bring in Mr. Carlos Richardson. Mr. Richardson, welcome to the Acromas podcast. We're thankful for you to join Thank us. you guys, appreciate it. Thanks a Absolutely. lot. Absolutely. Happy to be here. <laughs> yes, yes, it is a pleasure for you to be on. And we wanna thank you for taking the time out to join us today. And um, being, being a veteran educator as yourself, man, I, I really wanna take some time to really dive into your life a little bit. 
How okay. did you start off when it came to teaching? What what drew you to teaching when you were growing up, and uh, maybe when you got to the point of actually becoming a teacher? What what really drove you to become that? So, my, my teaching story is one of those. Um, I I didn't imagine that it was going to be this, but when I think back on my life now, I I one hundred percent know that everything was building up to this. So when I graduated from undergrad in 2000, my dad's from DC, um, and uh, but we, you know, I grew up outside Pittsburgh in Michigan. And um, I knew from coming here, you know, in DC growing up and stuff that I wanted to move to DC, right, for, for, for good. And in college, I would sneak away to DC to party and hang out and a whole lot of other things. And so, you know, uh, a lot of my friends followed me after college to DC. And I was working in a bookstore and I was the books of uh, B. Dalton bookstore. So in Union Station here in Washington, D.C., um, it was an H&M recently and I was closed up. But anyways, I was working there and then I uh, had a friend that called me and, you know, was like, there's a teaching position open at our school. Would you be interested? Now, mind you, up until then, one of my friends was like substitute teaching and doing other things. And this is like, we're like 22, 23 at this point. And, you know, and I'm, I'm saying over and over again, oh, hell no, I'm never working with no kids. I don't want to be with no kids. Like, you're crazy. Right. And when I was uh, working at a store, there was this woman, this Caucasian woman. And this is when I started working uh, part time at uh, not part time. I got a manager job at the Crystal City um, store. Um which is interesting for people who don't know is right next to Pentagon City. And I was there on 9-11, experienced everything, you know, watching the Pentagon burn and all of that from um, having to evacuate. But anyways, there was this woman that worked in the patent office uh, above um, where the store was, stores on the bottom level. And we would talk all the time and I'm a lover of books. I used to play library and, you know, growing up, car catalog and the books in the house and everything. It's kind of wild when I think about it now. And, I, um, she was talking to me. She was like, you know, what are you doing? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you're not like, basically she's trying to tell me I wasn't really tapping into my potential, like who I really was. Right. And, you know, and I, and, and mind you, my dad's a college professor. Right. And so he kind of, of course, encouraged, encouraged teaching and all that. But at that point I was just thinking like, I don't want to work with nobody's bad kids. I don't want to be involved in that. I think I just wanted to be young and sexy and free. Right. And then now dealing with kids. And so she called me and she basically sold me to her principal. Um, I got hired without even talking to the lady or even meeting her. And this was fourth grade um, right on PG County, Camp Springs. And so I got into it by, my, by mistake. My homegirl hooked me up. There was only two men working in the whole school, me. And at that point I was what, 23. And this guy who was retiring that year who had basically kind of checked out, right? And you know, it was like a Michael Jackson experience working in that school, <laughs> meaning when I walked in the building, it was like chaos. Everybody's running to me. And and mind you, the dress code was anything but pajamas and swimwear. And so I'm 23. I'm I'm and I've always I'm I've been a fashionist still since I is in my in my blood, right? So I'd be dressing, you know, hip hop and cool, and they'd be grabbing onto my leg and holding on and all this kind of stuff. And again, the kids, you know, love me. Um, and I kind of thought to myself after working for a while um, that, oh my God, this is kind of what I meant to do. And I started thinking back whenever we play school, I was always the teacher, right? I was always the librarian. I was always, and when I thought back on those things, I was like, all right, this is really what I'm supposed to be doing, but I was resisting it for so long. Um, and, and even coming into urban education, uh, not only was teaching new to me, but, you know, I basically grew up in, in the suburbs, right? You know, grew up, you know, now with a lot of people that look like me. And so there was that part to deal with too, because it was, it was foreign to me. You know what I mean? It, it, the experiences that my kids were dealing with even back then. So that, that's how I got into it. Wow. That's interesting. No, it, it seems like you kind of stumbled into this this dream of yours and you've been so successful in it because it seems like your personality, your approach to life, even your background from your father mm -hmm. being a professor mm -hmm. before, it kind of just seemed to make sense. And, you know, having 
kids gravitate to you as soon as you see and and look i mean i look we were all students at some point too you know mm-hmm. once you see somebody new in the building you're just you just run right over to them right and yeah. I, I think with your personality and and the way you approach it and the way you're the way you're dressed the way you're you know th- there's something there that mm-hmm. they are gravitating to and they're anxious to learn and i think i think that is a that's a part that's kind of lost i think when it comes to that sort of student to teacher relationship it's like the student mm-hmm. wants to want to be there right he wants mm-hmm. to learn but of course the teacher has to somehow understand each and every student and their method of learning or how they may learn so i think as you started since this wasn't the first thing that you wanted to dive into mm-hmm. um did you have uh did you have a particular nice student yeah. that very first year um that really I, I guess burned something in your mind like man okay I'm I'm really I'm really out of my element a little bit because I I think I'm trying to understand how you're learning but it is a little bit new to me it's different and I'm learning more about myself in the process was there a student at that time that that helped you get to that point um wow you know it's too bright it's blind, yeah. um that's interesting. I'm trying. I'm trying to think. I mean, I've always had what I, I call my sons, right? And, and you know, I know you guys are very positive, right? And I, I, I'm appreciating that. But I'm going to keep it real. That there's also uh, the the bad part that, that's come with that too, and that's a, been a lot of disappointment, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, going back to your original question, that first year there was, and that was, for my first year was fourth grade. And so there was about three young men that were like really close to me, you know what I mean? And it was, it was just interesting. When I think about it now, nothing was inappropriate, but they were probably a little too into me, right? And I was young and whatnot. And, um, and I think that, you know, they taught me a lot about, A, I got to see the, the yearning that a lot of these young men had for like father figures, you know what I mean? Big brother figures. And you think, Oh, that's so cliche. People say that. I'm like, oh, no, it really is. And, and, you know, even years later when I started working at the high school one day, um, the young man, one of the young men had uh, walked by in the hallway and I kind of stopped. And I was like, wait, that looks like him. I hadn't seen him since he was like fourth grade. At that point he was like in 12th grade, but I still knew who that was like this little boy growing up. And it was wild. Just thinking about, you know, how how time is has passed and whatnot and so yeah there's a lot you know uh i feel like even it kind of expanded upon your question when uh every year i kind of take it upon myself to take maybe intentionally three or four under my wing right and i'll, I'll just kind of look and i'll kind of observe and i'm like all right your vibe is cool right and then a lot of times i also think to myself would I hang with you if you were an adult, hmm. right? Because even when you're dealing with high school, you very much can kind of see how people are going to be, right? Yeah, you know, you can grow and be better and all that, but a lot of kind of like your make and your core at that point sometimes can be very representative of what you are as, as, as you know, as a grown person. You could change, but not everybody does that. So, um, and so I'll take them under my wings, you know, and and it just taught me a lot of lessons, you know, about um, even with some of them, you know, loyalty and 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 knowing that people are young and making mistakes. And even though I know that they're young and making mistakes, sometimes a lot of the situations hurt, right? Um, because you're doing for people, and you know, um, even a young man I'm not even talking to right now, right? <laughs> so getting him to college right it's poor and cool his, his mother and I were cool he had used to have some anger issues when he first came to school and we just got really close 11 12th grade year he's called him son and all that you know he's going to college I knew his college material why I taught him I, I knew his ability and um took him to Walmart to get stuff for college I'll just say I spent hundreds of dollars and you know he was in college that first year and, you know, I was that person that you cash app in every couple months because you need some money for deodorant and things like that. But the whole point is he had dropped out and I didn't know it. 
I'm talking to another teacher as I'm staying and doing um, afternoon duty in the summertime. They're like, oh, you know, so-and-so's not in school anymore. I'm like, what? So when I called him on it, you know, instead of him kind of listening and wanting to talk talk it, he took the total of their approach. Like, oh, everybody ain't like you. Everybody ain't buying, buying, finishing school. Da, da, da. And, you know, I'm trying to talk to him, tell him he has the potential to do it and it just ended badly. You know what I mean? And I felt kind of like, oh, and then he said, oh, it was all about money for me. No, it wasn't. But I did make an investment, you know? And so, um situations like that you know is the bad part is where you get close and 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 you get some hurt right so that's that's a a tame story compared to some of others <laughs> that's that's tough man and and yeah. you know my my wife too she was an educator she still is mm. um she she's from guyana south america we were in a long mm. distance relationship um we're, we're now finally married but very um, good yeah appreciate it congratulations i just thank you thank you <laughs> but yeah. when we you know when we first started she was a teacher and the student to teacher dynamic in guyana south america is so much different than it is in the states so mm -hmm. much closer all of her students looked at her as mom and you know mm -hmm. she's able to you know take them to lunch buy lunch for them and you know there there's much more of a deeper relationship a deeper bond um especially because a lot of those kids didn't have that at home so they mm -hmm. were looking at that from her. So the, when you told that story, uh, when you were fourth grade, you typically take, you know, three or four in your wing. I think that it's so important because even at that age, you mentioned that, you know, a lot of these kids are kind of already set in their ways, so to speak, or yeah. you know exactly who they're going to become later on in life. Um, I think a lot of that, you know, may even start from the house. So if you're 100%. able, yeah, yeah. If you're able to continue to encourage these kids to tell them, like, look, the world is yours, right? I'm living in the world now as an adult. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm telling you exactly, like, this is how it's going to be. Like, prepare yourself for that. I think if they're if they're seeing from the example that you're setting, that oh man, look, he made it. He's he's got all these accolades. He's done all of these things. I, I, as a student or a child, I'm going to forget really what's going on at home and, and really focus in on someone who I truly believe is there for me. Because a lot of these kids, really, all they need is love, right? All they need is yeah. that affection, that attention. So I think the job that you've done with the kids that you've been able to teach, you know, even, even Will included, it's, it's a reflection on, the, on what you've been able to instill in them, that hope that that ability to see opportunity and take it that um that feeling of being able to believe in yourself when nobody else may believe in you um i think all of that is important so um yeah. even for those who you may not have been able to reach in the end like the college student that you mentioned um i still think it is important that you were to take that time out and spend with them because you know god i mean i bet you remember things um, from fourth grade that you've had to deal with or go through and those people mm -hmm. that you made a bond with those adults that you bonded with back then you still remember what they told you now you still remember mm -hmm. the impact that they had on your life now so mm -hmm. same goes for the students that you've been able to teach yeah 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 for sure yeah i guess i'd, I'd want to ask um <clears throat> and following up on just kind of reflecting on it uh, how, how would you say your approach has been since that experience? Like, cause, cause I, I can imagine it being, it was, it's, di it's difficult because, you know, you want to separate and keep a line there, but you know, if you're well, myself, I'm very I'm empathetic and empath at heart. So I find it difficult to be able to separate lines sometimes, but in, you know, the, the uh, career field of, of being willing to, in some aspects be selfless and just trying to teach life lessons along with educational experience um how how would you say your approach to i guess interacting and engaging has been with that and not allowing yourself to get to a point of uh being so distant right because you know you have your you have your few but uh when you recognize and seeing that potential and trying to help someone maximize that and 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 they, them kind of falling a bit short of it and the expectations that we set, like what's your approach and your thoughts on that? So, you know, so as, as, actually this is year 21 in education and it's changed. Okay. So of course you, the, you get older and you're wiser and you're smarter and you have some things you have to protect. Right. And, and, and so 
and I guess let me expand. So even over the last 20 years since I've been dealing with high school, right, there's a good maybe seven that have been super close, right? And one being super close for my early years that about two years after he graduated, he moved in for a while. Um, his mother and I was really close. Well, I'm not going to say really close. We were close, but she has some some personal issues as well, right? And he was going in the system, you know, and, and living in independent living and all that kind of stuff. We just got really attached. But he did a lot, a lot of things when he was living here that, you know, really compromised the friendship, the relationship. And we're still, we still talk to this day. We have our off and ons, but between him and some other things, or maybe some people have taken advantage of me, right? I, I, I could, and let me explain, before I got married, before I got in a relationship and cohabitating, I was living by myself in a five bedroom, three level house. So I had space for people to move in. The basement had his own bathroom, still the, his own bathroom, own living room side, extra door, uh, you know, full bathroom, all the, all that stuff. Right. And so, okay, I got some space. All right. You know, you can help me with this mortgage. Right. And just things would turn out with them each time. The ones I was closest with each time, bad as far as you know not handling their stuff and a lot of them are in their uh mid-30s now right and you know some of them have have, have apologized for that and, and different things but i've been burnt over the years right for having this extra you know compassion and things and and it took me really get into my relationship not on some old like you know oh you know trying to clean house and get everybody out but like look at what it's, how certain people are treating you right and so yes i still open myself up to the relationships but i've been in a lot and not all of them been bad right but i have to say the majority have turned out bad um and and i know people are young and they, they make the mistakes and i'm and i know the population i'm dealing with too right um but it, it, I'm more cautious, right? Because um, I'm at a place, right? You know, I'm uh, 44 and married and four dogs and, you know, working on uh, finishing my doctor. I got other things I need to worry about um, than, than putting myself in a position, you know, to where, where things will go bad. But, um, and so I'm a little more cautious, right? But I, I have a few right now that I'm, you know, really close with it, nurturing and, and helping them out because even with them being in 12th grade i'm finding like you know there's not a lot of direction um what they want to do in life and i know you know in a few months <laughs> the world is going to totally see you just as this adult and they have to know that you know what i mean there's this whole mommy this mommy that no you're 18 under the law you're a legal adult right so when it comes to this this and that there's not going to be all these handouts and this um you know extra like understanding for mistakes that you make right and so yeah so i do try to give good examples to my kids um students as as this mistakes i've made so they can do better but i've said this saying for a long time there's some people i could tell them that the stove is hot and they're going to listen to me and not touch it. and there's others even if i tell them it's hot they still got to touch it for themselves and know it's hot so you can do you know speak speak to you dry you know your mouth is dry telling somebody what they should do and learn from your mistakes and blah blah and a lot of people are going to just have to experience themselves and that's what it is look i i would say that goes for adults too that are in their 50s <laughs> 60s you know i i always yeah. say maturity has no age you know it, it there are some mm. people that just it doesn't it just never hits you know um mm -hmm. and you're right you see it you see it when you're young when they're young and um even though they might try to conceal it a little bit and put mm -hmm. a little you know, a different side of themselves, a facade that they build up. So you can try to build that trust again. When you get deep, you, you're like, man, I should have. I'm going back in, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, it's like, all right, I understand. And see, I'm trying to get people to, or when I'm, to people I'm talking about to the point of understanding that you're going to have to apologize for things, mm -hmm. right? You're not going to kill me with kindness because um, William could probably tell you, you know, he knows when I was there and he knows my posts and social media stuff. I'm very good at the shade. OK, I'm very good at <laughs> pretending you never even existed and you'll be in my own space. I'm skilled at that. And it bothers them. Yeah. OK, so see what happens. You know what I mean? And then, you know, uh, so so you don't want to do right. You want to mistreat people. You know, you got to learn that you're not going to have these situations where everybody's just like all these whole told people uh with this uh mess up now apologize later mentality mm. on purpose and i have a few yeah. 
even uh, young adults that I'm working with as mentoring as staff that do that kind of stuff, right? Because I'm, I'm officially at that. <laughs> I've been 20 years, 44. Now I'm mentoring the younger people, yeah. the teachers. I'm officially at that full stage. And so, um, you know, I, and, and that's what makes part of my job harder because I'm not mm-hmm. only dealing with the young people as well, but I, I have about, you know, three, two and a half adult uh, um, mentees as well that are, um, I don't want to use the word needy, but um, challenging to my time. Right, so. <laughs> the right way to put it. <laughs> that comes for for um wow full circle from the sounds of it. Uh, I I, I personally uh <clears throat> for those out there just for uh, for for transparency and clarity, I'm a former student of, uh, who I refer to as Mr. Rich. Uh, a lot of us from way back then would call him Mr. Rich. And one thing I can say, I still go by. Uh, <laughs> still go by. See, so still call me Mr. Rich. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. Like uh, you learn certain lessons. That certain people make a an impact or have certain moments in your life that you reflect on and you learn. Now, out of my, my time in, in, at uh, the high school that I attended uh, at that particular high, high school, Mr. Rich was one of the first teachers that for me personally had an impact in a way where I was very, um, I wasn't, I was more of like very reserved, very quiet, just very observative. Uh, but uh, when uh, Mr. Rich came and was one of our teachers there, I, I learned a lot, I listened. I listened a lot and uh, the delivery, the style was authentic. It was very, uh, a sense of uh, accountability uh, and and, uh, a real sort of sense of, you know, you give the effort, your best effort that you can, but it's on you to be able to do so. I can can lead you to the water and teach you how to fish, uh, you know, but I, you know, and you could be good and set for the rest of your days, but I'm not gonna go fish for you, but, yeah. But it was encouragement. It was um, love, a loving approach to it. Uh, mm-hmm. In my personal opinion, one of the one of the more um, first times that I encountered a teacher with that sort of style. Even at that point, I think at that point I was maybe in tenth or eleventh grade or something. But mm-hmm. having said that, uh, there were certain points and times that there would be a conversation of sort, and it, it stuck with me. It stuck with me. It stuck with my approach. It, it made it allowed me to reflect on myself, my effort. The company that I kept around because I didn't always run with the best crowd at that point. Um, mm-hmm. To be totally honest, I didn't. But I, I, I definitely had a, a, a stronger mindset of my decision making. So it, it allowed me to reflect and, and know uh, where I desired to go, uh, reflect and see my potential, um, and know that there are people out there who are rooting for every single person. Uh, you don't have to be told that directly to know that you know mm-hmm. you want you to succeed, want you to win, and um, throughout the years being able to just make observations of you know Mr. Rich and just that never changed it just grew and developed and just honing his craft but more importantly as yeah. we hope that you're listening to everyone just hear uh someone who's who's really committed and caring about people truly uh yeah. and youth of uh, if anything especially at that very pivotal age where your characteristics are pretty much the, this the, you know they're crafted they're just about ready to drop and go into this world and it will eat you alive if you're not ready for it but yeah because you definitely have to be built for it you have to be you know i've seen many come and go right and i used to say and i haven't said in a while but it just makes me think you gotta have a special kind of crazy right (laughs) you know um (laughs) because otherwise you're not gonna last and Mm -hmm. i've seen where there has been quote unquote the best and the brightest right there's certain programs I won't name their names, right? I don't want to be sued. No, play. And where they, you know, I got teachers through those programs, right? Who were supposed to be, you know, top of the class, all this kind of stuff. And you can have all of this knowledge and still not connect to any kid, right? You're still not reaching them, you know. And then you could be someone who's maybe struggling with your knowledge set and and could do wonders, right? And so it's it's really have to be something you're in, and I also say you know someone has to do it right you know because there is there will be times where there'll be long stretches of bad days or let me not say bad not so like oh what a great teaching moment we had today you know and then all of a sudden out of blue you have a moment and you'll be like Ugh. and I always laugh every time it happens because I'll be like oh this is why I do it all right it's these moments you know what I mean some knucklehead finally turns around 
or you know just the other day this girl cussing me out all the time and i you know i, I i'm gangster so you could come <laughs> at me and i i have developed a most eloquent way of reading you with academic intelligent words that you don't even realize i just shut you down and i, I put those interchange those words with curse words or something <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a cusser too but anyways um you know and so and then she finally realized like yo like i maybe need to make this right and came and apologized you know mm -hmm. another kid i'm still trying to teach these lessons needs to apologize wanted to come get all these favors and stuff and i was like mm. but when i asked you were you going to apologize you're like for what you have to think about it i said but now you want me to do what during my lunch break i said mm -hmm. oh and i said i'm going to introduce you to my good, good, good home girl miss karma right you know <laughs> and you got to teach them those things because yeah. they, they you know that's part of the life lessons right i know it's more than academic content it's kind of like you're not going to do people like that and think everybody's just going to come around and be like all right no no, that's not how this world works, right? Mm -hmm. And because you have to prepare these kids as well to be good adults, good citizens, you know? Um, and, and that's a bigger part of it. And I'm telling these kids a lot lately, like, it's, nothing's changed. You're, you represent your family, mm -hmm. right? You know, and if somebody goes say, oh, well, my family all like this, da, da, da. I said, and then you don't want to be better? They're mm -hmm. like, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I'm like, come on, you know, can't be on these streets. <laughs> not understanding that representation matters right mm -hmm. and and conducting yourself with some level of decorum and 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 just i'm not talking about assimilation and all this kind of stuff because i know there might be some people that could watch and think that's what i'm talking about but just you know having some decency mm. that's absolutely true i mean look everybody's watching right so if you're on <laughs> facebook instagram if you're on social media cutting up and custom people are going to take that image that they see and believe that everybody around you is the exact same. So it's important that, you know, I mean, image is everything, especially in today's day and age. Perception is truly reality now. It, sh it shouldn't be, but let's let's just be honest. That's the way it is, you know? Um, Every time I travel, they ask me if I'm in a band. I go to a lot of countries. <laughs> I always think I'm in a band. And when I tell yeah. them I'm a teacher, educator, and what I teach, I teach government politics. And they're all like, what? I'm like, see, you don't know. You never know. I'm not in my suit. I'm not dressed up. And you see my tats and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. I can flip the script real quick where, you know, but still, you know, it's funny. So that, that like you say, in the perception, right? That's interesting. Cause I, I just said the same thing in my mind. What government and politics? I, I would have never. Yeah. That. I and I'll go toe to toe with you. I'll debate with the best of them. Wow. I I, not that I want to, but I, with, right. I'm just saying, if anybody was to challenge me, I'll be like, and then, oh, you, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like the random things I read, you know, I, when I worked at the bookstore and I'm, I'm a liberal Democrat, but when I was at the book, working at the bookstore one week in between sessions, I read Nancy Reagan's biography. One time I read Barbara Bush. I'm saying, I'm going to know everybody and all the stuff. And so, you know, for me watching the state of the union dress, they, everybody, well, not everybody, but people that know me know that's my Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I'll be sitting there naming this random senator from Kentucky or something. And they'll be like, why do you know that? I'll be like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just <laughs> and I know who they're beefing with, you know. It's yeah. crazy. Anyways. I mean, look, I mean, yeah. let's, let's stay there. I mean, the state yeah. of politics now, right? I mean, everything is kind of flipped on his head. I mean, we we had a reality star become president uh, a couple of years ago. And it seems like now it's kind of opened the door for anybody and anybody to, to become a politician or to be involved in politics. Do you believe that there is some sort of standard that someone who is a politician should have, or should it be open? Should there be someone who's a celebrity or reality TV star being able to be the face of a country? Mm. so this is a um, good question so this is the part where um hmm, the traditionalist part of me when it comes to government will come in right <laughs> and i do believe in the constitution of the united states of america and i think it was a very well written document set for certain pieces with the slavery piece and all that before it got taken out okay mm. but so I do think that the qualifications of, you know, having to be 35 U.S. citizen or, or born to, you know, citizen parents um, and living 14 years in the United States, you know, before you can run for president. I, I think that's 
really that's that's fine why because the whole goal of this democracy and and what this country was built on was to not have a monarchy right to not have a dictatorship to not have those kind of things so a regular person can get to that position right and so granted some regular people did get to that position right but i guess in modern times the people really that get to that position have already money or power influence right and 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 not even the money thing right because we got people like bill clinton right he was he he came from very poor background right single mom and barack obama right heck his damn name middle name is hussein and he still won the presidency right and so i feel like i and this is where my thoughts have to be fair because i'm like those same qualifications allowed barack obama to be president also allowed donald trump to be president so when I wanted to work on my side, it did. And then when it didn't work on my side, I had to kind of be like, ah, that's a part of democracy where all right, this time my side lost, but we didn't really lose because we got the popular vote, but which is even more frustrating electoral college. That's, mm-hmm. that's another show. But, um, and so I, when it comes to that, I, I think the, the, the requirements are fair, right? Now, am I very alarmed at what has happened to the Republican party? I am because they're being blind to what I call the Trumplican party, right? They're, they're, Trumplicans are different from Republicans. I can get down with Republicans. Yes. I like my Colin Powell's, I like my Condoleezza Rice's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and other, uh, uh, let me say this. If it wasn't Barack Obama running against John McCain, I could have lived with him as president. If it wasn't Barack Obama running against Mitt Romney, I could have lived with him as president right hell i hated george w bush so much and remember when when he was president i was in college right and then we got trump and i was and i one of those people that's like damn george you weren't that bad i really (laughs) thought i really i really was hating on you and now i'm like in disgust every morning when i'm looking at my phone reading the news like what happened today yeah (laughs) i mean and pure terror I mean, let me tell you, the night of the election, I stayed up. Of course, you know, I'm watching the returns and I finally go into a guest bedroom right off the side of the living room because I'm I'm getting kind of sick to my stomach because I feel like, oh, my God, what's happening? And my spouse came in and was like, yeah, Trump got it. And I I, I was like physically sick. Yeah. Literally, yeah, I threw up. And 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 I was just like, oh, my, because I already knew what was about to happen. And even when he became president, I opened up and said, you know what, let's give him a chance. Right. Because. Let me be honest. I am a, was a Celebrity Apprentice fan. I watched the shows. I liked him on the show. You know what I mean? I kind of got down with Trump a little bit. And then when this person he had to play up to, to or, or he had to, you know, be to play up to this target, to this audience, right, um, of deplorables. Sorry, no. Um, I, I didn't like it, but I was trying to give him a chance. And then it just, everything just went left. And I'm just like, so... Yeah, you know, I I think it's tough, right? Because I don't I don't really have beef with him. I mean, even you know, even before Apprentice, look, he's he's in real estate. I'm I'm kind of in real estate and construction as well. Um, so I you know I was I was following him because he you know he's a billionaire, right? He has a lot of money. I'm like, all right, I also but is he really a billionaire? But okay, debatable, keep going. debatable. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I still need to see remember. He says right? he he says whatever he wants to be, and he just tells people and expects them to believe that. But all right, yeah, that's true. All right. We okay. can say he's had his fair share of success, right? I'm just saying you were giving him high praises on stuff, and I just I, 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 I couldn't just let you yeah, do that. Just, but you know what, Mr. Know. In this, you know, in this no, era, cool. like if this time, I mean, why not, right? Yeah, um, look, I, anybody, everyone, any, okay, everyone. So when we when we come back from commercial, introduce me as Carlos Richardson, the billionaire. Then thank you. How about that? If that's if that's your model, then then yeah. <laughs> Will be whatever uh, we'll be uh, taken to the next level. But I'll, anyway. be glad, I'll be glad to do that. Everybody is anything <laughs> these days. It's 2022. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole different world. I mean, you could even on an in Instagram right now, you could just put entrepreneur under your name and you're an entrepreneur, right? It's oh it's yeah. A, yeah. It's but, a, but it's are you really? Well, I mean, that's the easiest thing to say for, for unemployment, unemployed people to say, right? And I'm no shade to the actual entrepreneurs, but oh, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah, 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 it's a buzzword, you know. It's, it's you might not even be working on anything, not not an idea in your head. <laughs> <laughs> Just the time. Yeah, we've been on them so many times. We actually did have a car, uh, we yeah. did have a conversation uh, 
Ask not too long about that. <laughs> oh man, absolutely. Wow. And, you know, it's it's crazy, you know. And and, and with him, it's uh, my my whole thing with that. It's it's the followers more than it is him, right? I think he says a bunch of crazy stuff because it riles up his fan base. But I'm I'm more afraid of them because I don't think they understand that a lot of the things he's saying is is crap, or that they're just they're so easily influenced by somebody who has this money and they look to him as their god so to speak and i've seen that on the other side because of, again my wife is from guyana my family is as well and there was a guy by the name of jim jones he was a very popular mm. leader you know he was he was he was a great speaker um so many people follow him unfortunately to their own death and mm. It's, it's crazy to see that because you would think that with somebody that has so much power that he can wield, that he would try to do his power for good. He would try to use that for good. But it seems that a lot of these people just get off from, from having that power and be able to tell somebody just, you know, go, go attack a capital or something, right? So it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy to see what he's been able to do um, throughout all this, all this time. But I, I mean, I, I would say um that one thing at least when I was growing up and, and I was in school one thing that we didn't necessarily dive into regardless you know, if it was politics or law and stuff like that it was we, we didn't really see outside of the curriculum a little bit more I know you mentioned before that you know as an educator you're 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 teaching what is in that curriculum but you're also teaching life lessons because you're mm -hmm. living that life. And it's important that those of folks who are graduating or coming out of high school, some may not go to college, some might go to trade school or just start working um, immediately, right? They have to have certain life skills. Is there a reason why, and, and maybe that isn't the case where you're teaching now, but it, it, it definitely was the case where I was learning. Uh, we didn't have the opportunity to learn how to build credit or you know how to how to establish you know yourself etiquette just all of those little things that we now use every single day we never at least where i was we never got a chance to dive into it for you in your case are you able to sprinkle some of that into the curriculum or is that something that is already in there i know there are some some you know schools in different districts that already have that which i think is advantageous to them but mm -hmm. For you, if you don't have it at the school you're teaching, do you sprinkle some of those life lessons in or some of those other skills that are definitely necessary to be an adult in this country? Um, so, you know, that's kind of co a complicated uh, question, right? So, yes, of course, I think we sprinkle in some life skills, right? But the challenges with time and, and, and you know, having to get through curriculum and having... Uh, target dates right and when things need to get done that you can't just totally shut it down all the time to do those other things right now granted when people talk about you know these kind of classes or things or teaching these kind of things it's, it sounds great and all but um there's not enough time in the day right there's other core classes they have to get in a lot of students are taking advanced classes right so they definitely don't have time for it and you know, unfortunately, a lot of people do not have the parents in the home to teach them those things, because I do feel like there's a part of where schools ain't teaching this, schools ain't teaching that. And I'm like, what's well, taught at home? Hmm. You can't teach everything, right? I mean, we're already the counselor to this, to that, <laughs> blah, blah. You need to teach your kids some things too, boo-boo. Right, like back in the day, help him fill out a check. Well, mama show him how to do it. My dad, that's what he did. He showed me how to do the tax, you know what I mean? My stepfather, who I grew up with, you know, they, those are some things that, you know, you have to pass on within your family, right? And things like that. And yes, there should be some, maybe you come from family where you want to be better and things like that. And then maybe there have to be some other avenues to do it. But I think a lot of it comes down to standards, state expectations, time frames, seat hours, you know, things that have to get done. Uh, accountability people oversight you know where you can't it, it, it doesn't always fit right and, and a lot of kids credit recovery already and so you could you know so yeah i i, I will sometimes stop and and show them a video about something you know what i mean just to even teach them um about uh things that might not necessarily go with what i'm supposed to be teaching you know, but um, 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I personally, I think that's big. And yeah, I think a part of that would be on the parents and the family that they're coming from. Um, and unfortunately for, you know, many families out there, I think that is something that they may lack. A lot of the parents may lack that type of education. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, they may, God, I hate to say it, but they may lack the time to, to invest in learning that so they can teach their kids the same thing too. Yeah. But I, I am glad that you're able to sprinkle at least a little bit in that, in there. Cause yeah. I think, you know, kids see that every single day, right? They're like, Oh God, my mom can't, she can't pay the bills. Oh, our credit is low. So we can't afford this house. So they're, they're experiencing that. And I'm sure they're asking, well, why, why did we fall so low? Like, what, is there something that I should be learning myself so that I don't repeat some of the generational curses that I've been a part of? So a lot of that is that, do you have intrinsic motivation? Mm -hmm. Okay. So my experience has been, of course, I've dealt with a lot of students who don't have anything right. And there's a set of students who take that lesson and say, I want to have more. Then there's the ones that's just like, well, nobody has anything. So I might as well just not have anything too. And there's those set of students too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that kind of deals with something that's in your core, right? You know what I mean? The same thing is that when if you're a young kid, yeah, okay, you might have a parent that's telling you, you got to get good grades, blah, blah. But how about the kids who had nobody telling them they had a good grades? They didn't give a damn and they still made sure they got good grades. There was something in them that wanted more, right? And you can't always teach that, right? Um, and so I think that's a big deal because I, I, I feel like these kids are given so many resources. Yeah, we're in urban education, right? But we have a lot, okay? We have a lot of technology. Yeah. No one pays to take the SAT, right? I, we had, I had to pay both times, right? Um, you know, no one, I mean, all these other things, oh, you know, these, the AP classes and the trips and the college uh, five-week programs and all these other kind of things that are being given to, to people. And there's those who are taking advantage of it, right? Um, but, and, and those who don't care, I, you know, I've always said you could give somebody a hundred dollars and you got the person that says, well, why not 150? You know what I mean? And so, a lot of it comes down to the core, but I think there's a, a if you if you want to do something and, and get get uh, advanced, you know, even as a young person, part of it you has to you know show that you want that and seek it out and 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 there's a lot of things that you can do as far as learning on your own too, right? They watch videos for every single thing. You want to learn about credit? There's a YouTube video about it. Yep. And very informative. And you can watch it on closed caption. You read it at the same time. And you can play it again so you can learn it. And so there's some things where it'll be like, and I'm like, why are you asking me that question? You can actually learn that yourself just by typing it in. And there's credible sources on there, right? Because there has to be some part where it's like you're seeking out knowledge of your own, right? Hell, I, I mean, I'm the person too when I can't sleep at three o'clock in the morning watching a YouTube video on why the orangutan turns this color in April type something thing, weird, weird stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but to me, it's about seeking knowledge, yeah. you know, yeah. it makes it good for a good dinner conversation too, saying something random, but <laughs> there's, I mean, you're yeah. absolutely right. There's no time. There's no better time than the present. We got this, you got a little mini computer in our hand that we yes. take every single place. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, you can, yeah. What's, what does this word mean? If you don't type that in Google, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you can just hold down the button, ask Siri immediately. Right. Very true. You don't know how to spell it, say it. It'll, it'll figure it out. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I, I, and I'd be remiss. I know you are a world traveler and I can, I yes. can sense it in your personality that you, you love to travel. So even without me yeah. being able to say that during the intro um i knew that was part of your personality so I, i'd love to ask what was the most memorable place that you've ever traveled to and why so number one on my list is is thailand um the people were super dope right i love going to countries where i'm a very rich person okay <laughs> So we're staying in a five-star hotel. I mean, fabulous. And we're paying like 60 cents a night. You know what I mean? Literally, you know, oh, we got a driver. Yeah, we're going to drive us around the whole day. You know what I mean? For like nothing. This is American money, right? 
Um, and so, and, and just the weather was nice and warm that it was very modern. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of, of course, I, I, I always make sure I see the, the poor parts too, when I go to countries, um, that's part of me as being a social studies teacher. Um, but, uh, the culture, um, my favorite food is Thai. Um, and we're actually going back there in February is a uh, Thailand and China trip. So I haven't been to China, I've been to Hong Kong, but I haven't been to China. And so that's happening in February. So I'm going back and this time we're going back to Bangkok again, which to me was just a Southeast Asian New York city. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but clean. <laughs> and, uh, but this time when we're uh, in Thailand, we're also going to be on the beach side, which I wanted to do too. Um, and so, yeah, Thailand, you know, and, and, and in Thailand helped fulfill one of the goals too, right? So I've been a Buddhist country, Hindu country, um, you know, of course, Christian. Um, I've not been to a Jewish, right? Now that I think about it, but Israel is, is on the short list, uh, the top 10 short list of places to go. Um, and so, yeah, it was, just, it was just a great experience. And let me say this also. I like suits and things like that. And if you're a gentleman, you go to Thailand and you get a suit made. That's what you do. So people hit me to that. The first day we got there, this guy was like, you guys, you, you the guy working at the you know counter, you guys wear suits? And we were like, yeah, we wear suits. Said, oh, okay. Have my guy come get you. And I'm kind of like, all right, whatever. You know, they're like, they literally came and picked us up, took us to the suit shop. We were drinking champagne and did our measurements and everything and got a three piece suit that is perfect to my body, right? With my name and everything in it for just a few hundred dollars, right? And they keep your measurements on file and everything. And so it is the destination if you're a gentleman who likes to dress like a gentleman, um, that's where you go and that's what you do. And so that was, that was great too. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was just dope. So Thailand was great. I love the people. They were cool, you know, so, yeah. Yeah. It's not like a must do then. Uh, do oh, you better. Yeah. People yeah. tell me, like, you, you do that. <laughs> I mean, even one time I was looking for a cabbie, right. And yeah. I held up a $10 bill and all these people come running to me to, and I think we took a tip to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and let me say what else I do on, on travel to, to add in. I always go to the bank and I take out a hundred dollars in ones before I go on these trips. Right. Cause unless you're in Europe, they all want American money. Right. And so, and little kids come up to me. Cause I guess they say I'm American. I'm probably, and I don't, depending on where I am, I'm not always dressing very rich. Right. But, um, and I give out $1 bills, right. To the kids and people and everything. It's just kind of my thing. Like, and they'll be acting like it's a million bucks, but I know they could do something with it, you know? Um, you know, sometimes two or three or whatever, you know, whatever, but I, I do that. I make sure that when I'm dealing with people, when I, I make sure I go to actual marketplaces to buy from the local people in every country, whether it was India or, or uh, you know, Thailand or, you know, we did all seven Central American countries now. Um, and, and so, you know, wherever I go, Brazil, wherever, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm checking out the people and I've, and I've seen the hood in every country and been in the hood in every country too. So, uh, and, 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 but I'm still staying when my spouse ain't staying nowhere near the hood. So we, we only can only stay in luxury, but uh, um, to me, I, I, you know, you could give me something one step up from a hostel and I'll be okay. But that I, you know, I'm not married to that. And so, um, but I want to make sure, you know, I'm connected with the people, you know, and, and I have, and I've made some good friendships and, and many times, and I'm not trying to do this for accolades, but, you know, even homie that I met in India, we got real close, you know, and I, you know, gave him enough money to, to, to pay off some bills for the month, you know what I mean, for him and his family. And to me, you know, it might be as much as I might spend on a, you know, a nice out to dinner with my spouse, you know what I mean? So it's not, I always say, if I could spend this and you don't see it, when I'm talking about food and restaurants and drinks and you can spend that much money and, and do you have nothing to show for it you could spend it on other things where it will make a difference that's awesome yeah yeah. yeah so yeah so and we also have coming up um in may going to finland and sweden on this academic um tour it's going to be sightseeing but also we're going to be visiting schools on all three levels um with a group from uh buoy oh so. wow yeah 
Yeah. yeah. So. Crossing off the list. It's, it's yeah, incredible. I am. You know, we did six continents and, you know, there's a way to get to Antarctica, but I'll, I'll save it for later. You know, you can take this cruise boat off of the uh, tip of Argentina. And you, of course, there's no infrastructure for people to actually stay except for scientists in Antarctica. So you do it just like you're on a cruise ship. You know, you get off, right? Go see the little stuff. You can come back on the cruise ship. So it's about $8,000, $9,000. I said, oh, we might do it just so I could say I did all seven continents. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me that if you go to Antarctica, you don't fall off the edge of the world. I mean, there are some. Oh, my God. Where'd you go to school? <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> well, some people are going to be very upset hearing that, you know? Oh, God, I know. <laughs> After they ever been on a cruise ship, I always say that's the biggest indication. If you ever thought the world was flat, Spend a week on a ship and you'd be like, yeah, no, this joint ain't flat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that's one of the thoughts I had, you know, sometimes when I'm on a cruise ship on a balcony. Yeah. Sit there and I'd be like, people really thought this. And I could see why they thought it was flat because it just looks like, you know, but it's pretty flat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's great. I mean, it's you know, I this this has been an incredible conversation. I mean, there's so many accolades that you have and so many places you've seen, so many things you've done. But for our audience out there that is watching and, and really wants to tap into you and understand more about you and and maybe see a little bit of themselves um, throughout all of this, what what is one bit of advice that you would give anybody who's listening who's Maybe they're struggling through school or struggling to find out who they are. Maybe they haven't stumbled into their purposes yet. What is some, what is a tip that you can give them to be able to allow them to see the light for themselves? You know, I, I'm glad you, you asked that because I was, when I was thinking about this, when we were first coming in, I was like, oh, maybe I'll share this story with you, you know? Um, so even with my own life experience, even though my dad's a college professor and all of that, I realized that part of that also had made me spoiled, right? Meaning it was never, are you going to college? It's just like, all right, you, you are going to college and you'll get there and where is where are you going, right? There was no question. And so even when I, when I first got to school, you know, I was popular partying, right? Um, by sophomore year, made what I, we thought was gonna be super fun. We had actually got a five bedroom apartment and four of us were very popular. And the house started having parties on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Next thing you know, I'm doing a lot of other things. And I get um, a letter saying I have failed out. Basically, I was on probation. And back then, I thought to myself, you know what? It's fine. I'll go work at the Gap. Because to me, in my head, working at the Gap was where it was at, right? A lot of people don't know the Gap was hot, hot, hot back then, right? And and I just thought, you know, all right. And so I was, I was working at Cedar Point. I started working at Cedar Point during that summer after I got kicked out or whatever. And um, and they had us work six out of seven days a week. And then on two of those days, we did these split shifts where we worked eight hours, then was off for four hours, and then worked another four hours because the park was open to like midnight, right? And they did it that way, so they didn't have to pay us overtime. And I thought to myself, oh my God, I'm like a slave for the man. This is what's out here. And I was like, it was much easier being a student, right? I made some moves. My dad got me a meeting with the dean. And let me say this, I played in my head, it was such a movie because the steps were long walking up to the building where I had to go meet with the dean. And he, he let me know that he was only taking a meeting with me on the strength of my father. And that I had to take these two classes that I failed economics and accounting. I'll never forget because it was absolutely horrendous. And I had to get at least a B in each class to pass, right? And to get back in, he would let me back in. It's the first time in my life I ever really I went to tutoring, right? And, and started getting it. And it was kind of a miserable summer, you know. I mean, I didn't mind staying on campus sometimes during the summer, but just like being in classes and those classes, I should say, right? And, and I, I did what I had to do when I got back into school and the whole rest of the time, I had to build myself up to get my GPA back up, right? But then I graduated a few years later, I got my master's and then we get all the way to today, this morning actually, um, I passed my dissertation proposal. So now I only have the research in the pool of defense. So this is a day I've been waiting for for years and it happened this morning. So I'm very happy about that. And so 
I would say my story was, you know, at one point in time, I was going to be done, right? I was over it. And, and to think now that I'm about to be Dr. Richardson, you know, when, when I was really just going to be done with school and just so you could persevere, right? You could get kicked out and, and then decide you want better for yourself and, and get yourself back in and, and matriculate to all this. And then think about even here with, I, I didn't even really plan on going into teaching and then, then, you know, become teacher of the year. Right. And so it's, it's things like that, that you don't think something's for you or you might not uh, necessarily want to start working hard at it at first or whatnot, but you know, you got to persevere and try to be your best self and, and those rewards will come. And I'm, I'm a testament to it because, you know, uh, all these blessings that have come, um, you know, could, it could have not have been so. Wow. Congratulations to you for starters. Wow. Thank you. Wow. No small feats. Um, and I never want to do this ever again. <laughs> I tell when people ask me honestly, should they get into it? I'll be like, you gotta really think if you're if that's what you want to do. Not saying that if you're built cut for that, but it's <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's um, yeah, as as we'll see said, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, well, it's been a long journey for you to get to this point, but yeah, weird, right? And you stay true to yourself. You stay true to who you are. Um, mm -hmm. You're a mentor, both you know, children and adults up until this point. So, mm -hmm. man, what a what an amazing life you've had thus far, and so many of more. Years yeah. Ahead. yeah, 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 uh -huh. absolutely. And before mm -hmm. we let you go, of course, mm -hmm. I know that people who are watching are going to want to get in touch with you somehow. So. Mr. Richardson, how can these folks reach you? Um, on Instagram, I'm Los Boogie Three. That's L O S B O O G I E Three. Once again, L O S B O O G I E, and the number three. And on Facebook, I'm Carlos Richardson. Yeah, and you know, I don't really, um, I don't really use my Twitter or my Snap or my TikTok or none of that. I mean, I have them, but. I, you know, I might go on it once every five, six months. That's, that's, <laughs> I guess I'm not hippie enough to be on that full time. I don't know. I, just, I don't have the energy. Actually, you know, I'm very busy. So I can only really keep up with my IG and my Facebook for real. For real. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> and, and email, right? <laughs> Between the WhatsApps and the group bees, it's, it's yeah. enough. <laughs> too many. You're, you're not missing yeah. everything, man. They're, they're all in, in, okay. in, saturated at this point. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So look, Mr. Richardson, again, we want to thank you for joining us on the Acromas podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure with you uh, this Sunday. Um, and we, again, we want to thank you for taking the time out to be here with us. If you guys are watching, it means you're, you're well, actually, let me, let me back up a little bit. You're listening, right? You're probably taking this all in. You're probably driving, you're folding clothes, you're doing something, but I hope you're taking these gems that this man is laying down ahead of you. Not that anything in your life is possible. If you're listening to either on Spotify, Google podcasts, Apple podcasts, or wherever you're hearing a podcast at this time, if you're watching our beautiful faces it can only mean one thing. It means that you're watching on YouTube. There it is right there, right? I needed to do three things. If you did not do this at the beginning of the video, you have another chance to do it now. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. So the next time you hop on and you're looking for a leader, an educator, a former teacher of the year, a doctoral candidate, and a world traveler to listen to and give you some of the best gems you can find online on episode 91 of the Acromus podcast. It will be one of the first videos that you see. And we'll see most of all. If you didn't know by now, we'll tell you again, it's free to do so. It's free to do each one of those things and apply some of these gems that was given to you effortlessly uh, in today's episode. Uh, I hope you took away one thing from this, the very least accountability, because that's going to get you far in life. If you can hold true to that. And this is one of those ways you can start out now. Like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and then share this content because each one teach one is our motto. That's one of the things we talk about. And we talk about all this and we do all this because we truly believe that you matter, mm. every single one of you. So please be a part of that and be sure to do so. And we thank you. Teach one, absolutely. And, and I mean, literally tonight, right? Each one, teach one. Ladies and gentlemen, we want you to enjoy the rest of your week. And until next week, it is your boy, J.H. Gibbons. And we'll see. Hey.